stories that are untold, underreported, and all out inspirational. Carrie Pena reports. Hey guys, I'm Carrie Pena. Thank you so much for listening to Carrie Pena reports on iTunes and Stitcher and for watching our live feed on Facebook and on YouTube. And you can also always catch our content on inspiredmedia360.com. In studio with us today is Matt Phillips. He is a speaker, author, and high performance coach and a really cool guy. Thanks for being in studio today. Thanks so much, Carrie. Honestly, the timing could not have been more perfect. We're down here for my son's hockey tournament and just to be able to meet you and actually see you in person. I know because we've done fabulous. interviews. <laughs> we've, done, we've done this before. It's and now I finally put a face with a name. So and thanks for are, having you, me. You're based where? Based in Denver, Colorado. Denver. Yes. And I, I had the pleasure of interviewing you on my podcast um, many months ago. You go around speaking and writing on the, the topic of mental toughness. And we loved your interview. So when you emailed me and said you were coming to town, I'm like, we got to have you in. Um, we're going to talk about what mental toughness is. And you're going to give some great tips to the audience about how to develop it. Um, but first, I wanted to read this. I, I read a quote on uh, Lifehacker. And it says, developing your mental toughness can help you be more emotional emotionally resilient, push you to go further and harder and build armor to persevere against the bullets that life fires your way. What do you think about that? That's a great quote. It's it's interesting because when I talk about mental toughness, and we touched on this last time that, that we met and did the podcast, but I kind of break mental toughness into four different areas. And because mental toughness is a, it's a cool phrase to say, right? I, I get to go around saying I work with athletes, I work with business leaders, I work with entrepreneurs on mental toughness, right? It's a cool thing to say, but you know, let's dig into it a little bit, which that quote does. The way I describe it, it's all about confidence, focus, control, and perseverance. And the confidence piece is that 100% self-belief, right? When you look in that mirror, you are so proud of who you see staring back at you. And if you're running an organization or the head of a family, it all starts with you believing in yourself first before you can impact that family and take that company, family, whatever, to the next level. Mm -hmm. The focus piece is all about avoiding all distractions around us, right? So when life is firing those bullets, what are we taking What are we processing? What are we learning from? And and what are we choosing to do something about? Mm -hmm. Um, So that's that focus piece, right? So value added items only. The next piece is that control, and that's the emotional control, right? So that quote talks about the emotions, and they can take hold of us, right? When we all get angry and frustrated and, and overwhelmed and sad and even sometimes happy, it's what are we doing with those emotions? How are we channeling them to something that's going to move us forward? And that leads to that final piece, that perseverance, right? So how do we get out of our own way? How do we, when we don't want to wake up one day in the morning, how do we throw the sheets off and put our feet on the ground and take that first step and start our day the right way? So that quote, it really sums up kind of what I do on a daily basis. Whether you're a fitness professional, coach, whether you're an entrepreneur, um, that's what I'm really striving to do. How do we build individuals who are confident, focused, emotionally in control, and will persevere through anything that comes their way? And you say on your website that uh, the world's greatest leaders have one thing in common, and that is mental toughness. But where do you start? I mean, all the things that you outlined there. Uh, if you go in and you talk to a business leader, obviously these people are successful, they're smart, or they wouldn't be where they are. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they are 100% confident you know, or they can deflect all the negativity that comes their way. Where do you begin and how do you teach people to be more mentally tough? Where I start with everybody is at their core foundation. And I have this concept called build your stand. And it's actually based off the Navy SEAL ethos. I I have not been a member of the military, but if people watching and listening today, if you have not read the Navy SEAL ethos, I urge you to go please Google it right now and look for it and read it. It's one of the most powerful statements that I've ever read in my life. You start to get a glimpse into how the best of the best approach their job. And you start hearing phrases of like, I do not quit. We don't give up. It's country and team before self. Just powerful statements that that rock them to their core. So when they are faced with that adversity in their life, they are solid in why they're there. They understand what they're there to to accomplish and they go get after it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, that's the mindset of just unbelievable uh, people that do very dangerous things on a daily basis. So what I do in my business is really set that foundation with everybody and say, let's make sure our core is good, that we know why we're here, what we're doing, the principles and values that are driving our life. What are the actions and behaviors that are driving our daily decisions? Let's make sure that core is there because then we can start building from there. 
I see a lot of leaders go through and they're leading an organization, but I say, well, talk, talk to me about your leadership philosophy. How, how are you leading your people? And I get a lot of very general answers, to be honest. I get, well, I've got an open door policy and communication's important. And when I start pressing on those, I don't get a lot of solid answers, right? I don't get anything that is inspiring for me mm-hmm. if I were to be their employee. So I want to make sure we, we start really testing that foundation, whether it's your leadership philosophy, whether it's your life philosophy, because once that's solid, we can build and do amazing things. How did you come to this career? You're, you're an, an athlete, right? Yes, I was fortunate. I played Division One college baseball at Creighton University in Omaha. Uh, I then had the opportunity to go play professional baseball over in Europe. I, I knew I was not getting drafted here in the U.S., so I went to Austria and played for the Wiener Neustadt Diving Ducks. So <laughs> if, uh, if, if, you, if everyone here if you're has a fan, go it's ahead, right, right if, there. <laughs> if everybody has a little extra time, divingducks.com. I don't have so. your baseball card, Matt. I, what happened? I, I um, but, you know, so you've been around a lot of athletes all your life. Yes. Um, and clearly there's a lot of mental toughness that athletes have to show when they, when they, before you go out on the field, while you're there, um, you know, for you personally, what clicked in terms of the mental toughness in following that in your career? Yes. You know, I was blessed with great parents and coaches along the way that taught me some of these mental techniques. Um, to be honest, one of the reasons I started this business is when I look back at my high school collegiate and professional career, everyone says that the mental side is the most important. But when I start asking questions about that and almost testing people on it, they don't really know what to tell me. They don't know what that means, right? They say, well, you have to be resilient. I'm like, well, how are you resilient? Well, I don't know. You just keep pressing on. So one thing I found is I wasn't trained as well as I could have been on the mental side growing up. So topics like visualization. Everyone says visualization is important, but they can't really dive into why, what's the science behind it? How has this been tested? What's, what's the why behind it? Like, why am I spending my time on it? And then really taking it further and saying, how do I apply it in my sport? I would imagine that business leaders are very receptive to, to learning more about mental toughness. You bet. It's, what I saw on the athletic field and what I still see today, I see in the business world as, all, as well. We're all dealing with frustrations. We're all having those bullets shot at us that life is throwing at us. And it's difficult to deal with those. So when I was in the corporate world, I was I worked I worked for startups and Fortune 500 companies in a variety of different roles, from business development to uh, accounting to operations. And I saw the same frustrations I'd see on the field in the business world, just in a different format. Right, it's, environment's a little bit different, yeah. smells different, looks different, all that. But it's the same thing of how do we get out of our own way? How do we get out of our own way? <laughs> by being mentally tough. No, you know, the, where I go with people a lot is what is that foundation? And then what I do is quickly dive into the power of thinking, right? So the thoughts we have. I start talking to people about different routines that they have, right? How do we set up our day in an appropriate way that's going to set us up for success and not set us up for failure? I talk about goal setting with individuals of how to do it where it's going to create momentum in your day and give you that mm-hmm. dopamine hit that we're all out there seeking with our video games and phones and all that, we well, can get that like attacking your goals, right? So how do we start uh, setting ourselves up where we believe that we can achieve more than we re- originally think we can, right? What do you do in, in terms of setting yourself up for the day? Give people some very specific tips about when they wake up, because I know you're big into this. When, when I yes. interviewed you the last time, you talked about preparation for the day. Yes. So. I'll give a challenge to everybody watching and listening today. And it's this. I want you to commit to getting up 15 or 30 minutes early every day. What I want you to do is before you get up, I want you to make a list of anything and everything that you could do to help you prepare for what's coming that day. It could be something fun. It could be something for work. You could make a to-do list. You could check your emails and make sure they're clear before you walk in the office. You could work out eat with your kids, uh, meditate, uh, do some prayer or spiritual work, but make a list of everything that you could do. Then get up 15 or 30 minutes early every day and start writing down the impact that it's having. When I do this, especially with business leaders, because we all get in that, in that frame of mind and when, when things get routine and they get, you know, we just get kind of stuck and we're waking up, showering, 
eating a quick breakfast. If we yeah. eat anything Racing at all, and door. off we go. Yeah. We're showing up to work sweaty, stressed, and now we've got to get into an, what we know is going to be a stressful day anyway. Um, especially for business leaders, if you start looking at what you're doing with your morning and you fill it with things that energize you and get you excited and fired up and you accomplish something during the morning and you walk into the office confident, focused, emotionally in control, calm, calm it's your day starts out. Didn't you tell me well. when I interviewed you the last time that you that you coached a business leader or CEO on that and he said getting up 15 or 30 minutes earlier totally has transformed his life. It changed his life. The CFO, after I did this with his executive group on their retreat, uh, called me two weeks later. He said, Matt, it's changed my life. And I said, okay, you have to give me some more info on that, right? Tell me the story behind it. He said, Matt, I committed to getting up 30 minutes early every day. What I decided to do at that time is to make my children breakfast and sit and eat with them. And he said, it has transformed our relationship. He also said that the energy that he gets from his children now carries through with him the rest of the day. So you want to talk about a win in the morning? Yeah. Get up, make breakfast for your kids, eat with them. Pay attention to them. Pay attention, build that relationship. And by default, you're going to have a good day after that. You know, I want to ask you about how mental toughness can help us all, whether you're a business leader, executive, athlete, what, what have you. But getting through trying times, and I know that you personally walk through a really devastating experience. If you could share with the audience a little bit about that and how you yourself learned some mental toughness techniques that helped you get through that tragedy. You know, my, it's interesting because we all have our story of adversity, right? We all face the trials that life throws at us. And for me, uh, one of them was about four years ago now, my father was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and it was right on the esophagus, right where it connects with the stomach. And it was a very, very big battle. Obviously, any diagnosis like that in your family or for you personally, it's, it's just shocking. It's, you don't know what to do with it initially. And my father went through just this tremendous battle and he decided to do chemotherapy and he had to do radiation along the way. But on that day he was diagnosed, my father decided that he was gonna fight. Right. And so I got in his ring. I was in his corner. I was fighting with him as best I could um, and went through this very two, very long two year battle uh, with cancer. He unfortunately passed away in November 8th of 2014. What I learned from that, from watching him go through that was. I saw this attitude of of never give up, of don't give in, of I'm I'm going to choose to approach this with the most positive attitude possible because I know if I do that I'm going to beat it, it's not going to beat me. That I'm going to control it, it's not going to control me. And he decided to take every step possible along the way to position himself to beat that disease. Now, unfortunately, obviously it didn't happen when he, when he passed away. But I took that and all of a sudden I had more fight in me. And I had a more positive attitude. And I decided that I was going to start making choices that moved me forward in my life and not held me back. And what's, what's fascinating about it is, uh, I mean, this, I could spend hours talking to you about that journey and, and what happened along the way. And, but it's just looking at my dad and understanding that he had the choice and he decided that he would be positive about it. He decided he would approach it differently than everybody else. And that's really what I've taken away from it is, you know, I, I literally wake up every day and I, I think to myself, am I utilizing my God given gifts and talents to their fullest today? Am I? It's either yes or no. Like, right. what's my choice? What am I going to do with this? And it is a choice. It's an, it's absolutely a choice. Now, if I decide, yes, I want to do that, then we have to think and act differently than everyone else. That when we face that adversity, right, when we're at, at the workplace and we're throwing a project our way that we really don't want to work on, Okay, so as I'm building my mental muscle, as I'm, as I'm going through that decision process saying, what do I want to do with this? Do I want to say yes? Do I want to say no? Do I want to give full effort? Do I not? It's approaching it in a way that says, how can I maximize my performance on this? How can I knock this out of the park? How, how can I make them so thankful that they gave me this project? That's the steps I'm going to take forward. That's what I'm going to do with this. That's what I'm going to choose and decide to do. How does it feel to be um, doing what you're doing today? I love to interview entrepreneurs and kind of get to the heart of 
what their purpose is and what, because you, you said you worked in, you know, a variety of big companies, you know, who knows what kind of Mm -hmm. salary you could have been making. It's always a risk to go off and start saying, Hey, I'm going to teach people about becoming more mentally tough. Yes. So how do you feel today? And it must be so rewarding when you can help someone transform their life. It's fabulous for, you know, I was, I was that individual who was sitting in a cubicle day in and day out wondering what is my purpose in life i was that i was that guy i knew i wasn't utilizing my talents to their fullest i wasn't getting the opportunities that i was seeking and i have put a tremendous amount of effort into myself developing my mental muscle my mental toughness in in the business world and so to be able to take that what I've learned and what I've taught myself, and I'll go teach others, whether you're on the athletic field, whether you're a coach, or whether you're an entrepreneur or a business person. It's a tremendous opportunity for me because I get to see people reignite that flame inside them. I get to see it be lit and just start burning out of control because they're so excited, so fired up to be alive, to be doing what they're doing, taking the steps necessary to get to, get to the level they wanna to get to. This is what this is all about. We all have those aspirations. I wanna get at this level of organization. I wanna make this much money. I wanna make this much in sales. Well, we have such limitations in our own heads that that's to be able to help people get out of their own way and start thinking that you can do this, you will do this. And you're saying in your head, I am this person, I will be this person, I will hit this goal. It's tremendous. And then when it actually happens, holy moly. I, I love what I do. <laughs> I love great... I love waking up. I love waking up and doing what I do. And now, uh, just really quickly before we wrap, your beautiful wife is here with you as well. So you yes. guys are teaming up, and she's a nutritionist. So tell me how the mental toughness, nutrition, and sleep all kind of ties together. Yeah, so first of all, I'm blessed because she takes very good care of me from a health perspective. And she's a nutritionist based out of Denver. She, you know, one thing I talk about a lot is that it's clear body, clear mind, right? And what you put in is what you get out. And that's why I'm thankful for Shannon because she's, she feeds our family so well because she understands the importance of good food on mental clarity and that mental toughness if we, if we wanna put that on it too. Um, so what we're doing is we're coming up with some programs that'll be launching here in the next, uh, next month or two around how do we attack both the mind and body at the same time, right? So how do we start formulating these habits from a mindset, mental toughness perspective, but also how do we feed our bodies the right way? And then we're adding a third element from this uh, very very famous doctor whose name I can't say right now, but um, (laughs) who's an expert on recovery and sleep. Because when you start looking at those elements that if I've got the right mindset, if my nutrition is set right, and I'm helping my body recover on a daily basis, tremendous opportunity to By open the way, up potential. You know you sent me an email saying that you were developing that sleep aspect of it with a doctor that you could and you say that to a news person. That's what we call a tease. And so you, then so I'm thinking, is it Dr. That. Weil? Is it Dude? And I'm going through this whole list in my head of I, I gotta get him to tell me. So one quick takeaway for the audience. What do you want to leave them with? The biggest thing is your thoughts. And being aware of when you're having those negative thoughts that are detrimental to your mindset and detrimental to your health. And the one thing I would ask you to do is get out a piece of paper, start writing down any negative thoughts that you're having. Could be about your job, your family, your body, anything. Write those down on a piece of paper and right next to it on the right, I want you to start writing something positive. I want you to offset it. By you simply doing this exercise, one, you're going to become aware of the thoughts you're having that are really, really hurting you and you don't realize it. Second of all, you're now starting to create these new neural pathways in your mind, which are going to now have more tendencies towards positive thoughts, which if we had a lot more time, I'd tell you about the different peptides that it's going to form in your body and now you're feeding your body right. Positive thoughts feed your body in positive ways. Write down those negative things, switch them to positive. Start start doing that today. I love what you guys got going on. Shannon, thanks for being here. Matt, thanks so much for being here and joining us. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Thanks for listening and watching Carrie Pena Reports. You can find us at inspiredmedia360.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can watch the next video or you can tap our logo on the screen to subscribe. Today's show produced and engineered by Shannon Hernandez, brought to you by Inspired Media 360. Until next time, stay inspired.